Hi, this is Wendy. Welcome to my channel. I have a sweet headband for you today, a bandana headband, or perhaps you'd call it a kerchief or a headscarf. It's done in a number four weight cotton using a four millimeter hook. It's very nice for tying your hair back and suits just about anybody. So I hope you'll join me and get a hook and some yarn and let's dive in and make this kerchief together. The finished kerchief is about 16 inches wide and 11 inches tall, which will fit the average woman's head. I'm using a number four Lion Brand cotton in a lime green color. And we're going to start off with a chain. So just make your starting loop. And I should have mentioned you need 50 grams of number four cotton to make this kerchief. Chain 63 to start. For the first row, work a single crochet into the second chain from the hook by inserting your hook, picking up a loop, yarn over and pull through. That's a single crochet and you're going to do one of those in each of the chains all the way across for a total of 62 single crochets. So just take your time and when you get to the end of the row, come on back and we'll go to the next row. So now we'll go on to row two. We've completed this row right here and row two is going to be this one with the groups of two double crochets and the spaces. So start with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet. And turn to do the next row. Double crochet into the next stitch. So this first V at the base of the chain, you've already accounted for that one with this chain three. Those belong together. So we're going to this second V from the base of the chain right here. So if you're counting the Vs, you're one, two, three, four, five from your hook. That's where you want to be. We're going to double crochet into that V right there. It should look like that. chain one, skip one. So at the base of the double crochet, skip this next V and go to the next one. Then do two double crochets in the next two stitches going under both sides of the V. Chain one, skip one, two double crochets. Chain one, skip one, two double crochets. Continue like that to the end of the row and you will end up with two double crochets at the end. All right, so your work should look something like this. We're going to go on to row three, which starts with a chain five. We're gonna turn and go back the chain five counts as a double crochet and two chains. Then we're going to single crochet into the space that you made with the one chain. Single crochet into the first space, then chain four. Single crochet into the next space and then repeat across. Chain four, single crochet into the next space. What we're doing is making the loops to fasten these scallops onto. So all the way across, chain four, single crochet in the next space, the chain one space. 
At the end of the row, after you single crochet into the last space between double crochets, chain two and work a double crochet into the top of the starting chain. So into the third chain of your starting chain, make a double crochet. All right, on to row four. Start with a chain one and turn. Single crochet in that same first double crochet. Then I'm going to work five double crochets into this chain four loop. So skipping over the chain two, go to the chain four loop and work five double crochets. And if you're a beginner, a double crochet is just when you start with a yarn over, put it into your work, yarn over again and pull that back through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So there's five double crochets. Do one single crochet in the next chain for a loop and five double crochets in the next loop. So you'll have five double crochets in every other chain four loop with a single crochet anchoring them in between. So just repeat that to the end, five double crochets in the loop, one single crochet in the middle of the next loop. I will have a written pattern for this um, bandana headband, but I am going to add a second pattern to it. So it'll be a package of two headscarves or kerchiefs. And once that's ready, I will add the link in the description. Then you can have a written pattern to follow if you'd like to make one for all of your friends. Okay, I'll join you at the end of the row when you should have two, four, six, eight, ten of these scallops, of these five double crochet scallops. All right, almost finished with the edging already. At the end of that row, make your final single crochet in the third chain of that five chain start. It's a little difficult to see from the back, but if you flip it around, you might be able to more easily see where you put your hook. But we want to leave two chains and put the last single crochet in the next one, which is third from the bottom. And then fasten off because we are going to flip it around and start from the other side. So there's the front edge of the bandana headband all done, like that. We're going to turn around and pick up and work the other way now. So making sure that the right side is facing you, and how do you know what's the right side? Well, if you look at this top of the scallop, the right side, the stitches, the V's turn toward you a little bit. So this is the front, this is the back. The back looks like it has little bars across. The front, you can see the little V's a little bit. They turn toward you. Putting your hook in that first space, which is the other side of the chain you originally made. Fasten another thread, or another yarn, sorry to that. And make a chain one 
and then single crochet in each of these across. So you will have a single crochet opposite each of the single crochets from row one. So there they are lining up opposite each other. So work all the way across and you'll have 62 single crochets. We're going to call this row one again because we're starting a new section. So at the end make sure you've got 62 and then come back and join me. And remember if you ever find that these videos are moving too fast you can go into the settings and slow it right down to a speed that you can keep up with comfortably and you can even turn the sound off and turn on the closed captioning so that the instructions are written on the screen you can slow it down or you can stop pause whatever you need to do to be able to keep up or catch up All right, so 62 single crochets and I will see you at the end of the row. Okay, for the next row, we're going to work it just like row two from before with one small change at the end of the row and I'll explain when we get there. So chain three for a double crochet, double crochet in the next stitch and of course we turned because we're going back chain one skip one two double crochets chain one skip the next stitch double crochet into the next two we're going to do that all the way across the only change being in the last two double crochets, you're going to do a double crochet two together. So I'll come back at the end of the row and show you what that looks like if you're not familiar with that. At the end of the row all I have left is those last two double crochets. I am going to do double crochet two together. So when you are ready to pull through your double crochet twice, just do it once. Leave that last two loops on the hook. Pick up another one. Start your next double crochet. This one's a bit tight here at the end. There we go. Again, just pull the first two. Now you'll have three loops left. Yarn over and pull through three. So that's your double crochet two together. It turns those last two double crochets into a single stitch. Now for row three, chain three and turn. We want to start narrowing the bandana down, making it a triangle shape. So we're going to skip this first chain one space and well the first double crochet and the chain one space and double crochet in the next double crochet right there okay so in the first pair of double crochets double crochet in that first one then chain one skip one and double crochet in the next chain one space and the following double crochet. So we're going to offset our groups of two a little bit. Chain one, double crochet in the next chain one space and the next double crochet. So you're doing the same thing as the last row but offsetting it by putting your first double crochet into the space and the second one into the first double crochet in each group. Chain one and skip that second double crochet and do two more. Chain one, 
skip one, double crochet into the space and into the first one. Continue that until you get to the last group of double crochets. When you get to your last group of double crochets before the two at the end, so you'll have a double crochet, a chain one, a double crochet, and a chain three starting chain left. So three stitches plus your starting chain. Simply double crochet into that last double crochet and ignore the starting chain. Okay, so that will narrow it in on the side. So the right hand end looks like this and the left hand end looks like this. Now for row four, chain three and turn again and we're going to offset again. Skip the next stitch which is this double crochet and double crochet in the second double crochet and the chain one space. Then chain one, skip one, double crochet in the second double crochet of the next group and the chain one space. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the second double crochet and the chain one space. Okay, so we're just offsetting those again. When you get to the last four stitches in that row, double crochet, skip one and double crochet, double crochet in the chain one space. Don't chain one at the end of each row after the two double crochets. Just double crochet into that last stitch, which is the top of the chain three from the previous row. For row five, it will look just like row four, chain three and turn. Skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next one, which is the second of the group of two. Okay, just keep in mind every time you're offsetting by one from the row below. And you'll see that they stack um, beside each other like this. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one and the chain space. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next one and in the chain space. Continue like that to the end of the row. Row six is worked just like row four. Chain three and put your first double crochet into the second one of the pair below and then one into the chain one space. Work your way across making 16 pairs of double crochets and then double crochet into the last stitch of the row. So from here on out, beginning with row two, three, four, five, six, seven, row seven, you're just going to repeat rows five and six over and over again. So look down two rows. What did I do here? Well, I skipped over the first two and I worked my first double crochet into the space. I'm going to do the same thing here. Skip over the first two, work my first double crochet into the space and work 15 pairs across, 
separated by a chain one each time. So chain one, skip one, two double crochets. Until I have 15 pairs for this row and then double crochet into the final stitch in the row. That's 15 pairs and then double crochet into the last stitch in the row, chain three and turn. Row eight is the same as row six, two rows before, and I can see there that my first double crochet was in the second double crochet of the pair below, right? Because if I look at this, each of my second um, double crochet in each pair is in the space again. So I need to put the first one in a double crochet and the second one in a space. So I'm just going to continue in this manner doing those two rows over and over. This row will have 14 pairs, the next one will have 13 and so on. And continue until it comes to a point and I have one pair left at the tip with two side stitches. Okay. So I've gotten to the point where I'm down to my last pair with a starting and ending stitch for the row next to it. So four stitches all together. A chain three, two double crochets, and a double crochet in my last stitch. And it's become a nice triangle. My next step is to turn to the side of the triangle and work two single crochets in the side of each row all the way down. That'll just tidy up that edge. Don't make them so tight that it's going to curl. Try and be as consistent as you can. When you get down to the trim piece, just continue with single crochets, sort of in the same spacing across those two single crochet rows and then two in the end of the double crochet rows. And I'm gonna do one in the last row where the scallop ends. Now I need my ties for tying the ends together. And I am going to do a chain of 40 stitches for my tie. After 40 chains, cut the thread, pull it through, and tighten up. And then you can cut this yarn a little bit shorter if you want to. So there's my single crochet edge and my double crochet pairs sort of stair-stepping up the side and down the other side. So I still have to single crochet along the other edge here, but because I don't want to start at the top again, I would like to start on the same side so that the stitches look the same on either side. I'm going to start with my 40 chains and then join on at the scallop and work my way to the top. Okay, there's my 40 chains. Pick up a stitch at the end of my scallop here. Pull it through and make a single crochet. And in the same manner, working my way up the side with two single crochets in the edge of the double crochet rows, 
one in the end of each of these two single crochet rows right in the middle. And two in each row all the way up. Again, trying to keep them a consistent tension. At the top, do two single crochets in that chain three along the side, one in each of the double crochets at the top, and then I'm back to where I started. Now, I could just pull this through, make a knot, and work it off, but here's a little trick to make it look nicer. On the last stitch, cut the yarn, leaving a couple of inches, and pull that stitch through. Take your yarn needle, and I'll try and zoom in so you can see this really well, but you'll see that this yarn comes out of this last single crochet. This was the first single crochet. I'm going to go under that V and then back into the top of the same V that the yarn came out of. And when you pull it like that, it becomes practically invisible. You can't see where you started or ended. So that's a nice way to finish off. Then work in the loose thread to secure it. And then the bandana headband will be finished. There you go. I hope that you enjoyed this project and that you enjoy wearing this or giving it to someone else. If you would like to come back for more videos, please like and subscribe and that really helps me out and let me know what other kinds of projects I could do. Thanks for joining me today. See you soon.